Greetings, my fellow geothermal students. Here we go, topic three. We uh, just want to make sure that uh, you're doing okay with the quizzes we've been taking here. You, know, you had the cross section of the Earth quiz. Some of you have taken it. Make sure that you take a look at the, your lectures. And then at the same time, you want to make sure that uh, you read the instructions here. We, the quiz will be an open book comprised of 20 questions. We'll have two attempts, one hour each, to complete the fine educational quiz. Remember to choose the best answer for each question. So it's the best answer. There might be more than one correct answer, but there is a best answer. So that might be a clue, huh? There might be three answers that are all correct, and the best answer might be all of the above. Okay. That way you can get three good answers for the price of one. Anyway, so be aware of that. I'm not trying to trick you. Just trying to give give you more information. Hopefully, it won't be too challenging. Okay, do well on that. Once again, the central column of the course is where you want to find all your lectures. Lecture one, topic two from last week. Lecture three, topic two. Lecture two, topic two, and then cross section of the earth. Now. You also notice that this quiz is going to have a closing date. The quiz will close Saturday, September 24th. So, if it turns out that there's some kind of an issue, special case, let me know, and I can make some adjustments for you in that respect. All right. Topic three: the Geothermal Energy Association. Whoa. We're getting ready for the quiz here. Tectonic plates and smart geothermal. That's going to open for you Wednesday, today. It's already open, huh? It just opened at 432. It's 433, so the quiz is open for you now. And uh, you'll have two attempts to complete the quiz. Be sure to read chapters 1 through 3 in your text, the smart geothermal. Look at your video and the assignments, and check out your week three lecture on YouTube, which is this right now. It's me, your instructor, Jonathan Bow. So, two attempts in uh, unlimited time, okay? So, uh, you go through it once, take a look at it, and if you haven't got 100% on it, take a look at some of the points where you might think are weak points, do more research. Get into the computer, look at look up the the different aspects. Like it might be it might have something to do with the Geothermal Energy Association. Questions will be related to the different aspects of the GEA, Geothermal Energy Association. And uh, that will be located information will be located right at here in your central column of your Moodle shell. So you can just click on this. I'm going to open it in a new tab so it's, it doesn't take quite as long to get things going. This is a great source of information for you here. You can become a member and the database is uh, just looking at it from a professional at larger scale doesn't really deal too much with the small scale residential applications. This is more of your big, big stuff, which is part of it. But uh, the thrust of this course, the main thrust of this course, is going to be uh, residential applications. But if we take a look here at the geothermal basics, an introduction to geothermal energy, what is it? Where is it located? This is a thermo therm thermographic re representation of uh, how deep the six kilometers in depth temperatures. You can see here up to 325 degrees cell, uh, centigrade. So, yeah, it's pretty hot, huh? 600 some degrees Fahrenheit. So we're located in the western United States, but 
the temperatures that we're concerned with, you know, anything doesn't even have to boil water with binary systems that you'll find out about in your uh, Smart Guide to Geothermal, chapters 1 through 3. And that's part of your assignment. Read chapters 1 through 3. You start to get an idea of just uh, how important the uh, lower temperature or binary systems are. So that you can use lower temperatures and still produce uh, large scale electric power, base load power, or power that's consistent 24 hours a day. So, base load power, that's one of your key uh, buzz buzzwords or uh, terminology meaning that if you have a good base load you supply a constant source of energy over a 24 hour period there's no fluctuation such as wind energy if, if there's no wind blowing there's no energy sun solar power no sun shining no solar energy unless you're into the the uh, heated salts or concentrating solar collectors like we see down in uh, in California Your Geothermal Energy Association here, you can scan through these. GEA events, about GEA, GEA honors, membership, the expo, news and media, Geothermal Energy Weekly, press releases. Let's take a look and see what's, what's going on nowadays with these guys. Sacramento, California, down by the Geysers Basin. California will be hosting the Geothermal Energy Event of the Year from October 23rd to the 26th, just nine weeks away. Okay, well, this is a little bit... not nine weeks anymore, huh? Anyway, the uh, whole idea is you can then take a look at these specific organizations right here. Sacramento Convention Center, Sacramento, California. Get you involved with your specific interest if it's large scale geothermal. Workshops. Reservoir stimulation, that's a good one. We talk about reservoirs. What is a reservoir? Well, where the heat, and that's where you have habitation, where, where the water or whatever your medium salt water is, picks up earth temperature and then brings it back to the surface. I'm not going to see me. Hmm. Wow. But if we take a look here, Geothermal Basics in this website. Let's go right here. <clears throat> what is geothermal energy? And these guys are on top of it. Heat has been radiating from the center of the Earth for some 4.5 billion years. I'm not sure how they know that. But. At 6,437 kilometers, 0.4 kilometers, 4,000 miles deep, center of the Earth hovers around the same temperature as the Sun's surface, 5,500 degrees C, 9,932 degrees Fahrenheit. Scientists estimate that 42 million megawatts of power flow from the Earth's interior primarily by conduction. It's conducted out towards the, core, the, the crust. And the mantle, remember, is the engine. Huh? Mantle's uh, taking the heat from the core, and as that heat convex up and out to a less pressurized environment, it cools and it sinks back to the core again, and we get these convective cycles. See right here? Maybe we then use injection wells and recovery wells to pick up this heat and carry it to the surface. In our Delo 
Uh, Lardarello, Italy. First geothermal plant in Lardarello, Italy. 1904. Principiero G. Noi Ganti. 1904. Still producing today. What is baseload source? What is a d d uh, dispatchable power source? Baseload power plant produces energy at a constant rate. In addition to geothermal, nuclear, and coal-fired plants, there are also baseload because the energy is constant. Its power output can maintain, remain constant, consistent nearly 24 hours a day, giving geothermal energy a higher capacity factor than solar or wind which must wait for the sun to shine or for the wind to blow. Respectively, this means a geothermal plant with a smaller capacity than a solar or wind plant can provide more actual delivered electricity. Capacity and capacity factor essentially refer to the distinction between megawatts and megawatt hours. Megawatt is a unit of power at the rate or the rate of doing work, whereas megawatt a uh, megawatt hour is a unit of energy or the amount of work done. One megawatt hour is equal to one megawatt, one million watts applied over the period of an hour. In geothermal development, one megawatt is roughly equivalent to the electricity used by 1,000 homes. Total energy geothermal installed capacity by technology up through 2012. Hmm. We start to look at the, uh, we'll go into more depth on these in the future, but here's a, an example of a, a dry steam plant. You have a flash power plant diagram, Dixie Valley, Nevada flash plant. If we make that a little bit bigger, you see here that we're looking at the geothermal zone, the heat produced by the core of the earth, and then you see where we've got uh, the injection well, the production well. So the injection well is where they reinsert the fluids. Hopefully they flow through the reservoir, up through the production well, into the brine steam uh, vessel, where then the, uh, the hot steam or the power for the turbine is taken off, run through the turbine. The turbine makes the, the electrical power through the generator. The steam is recondensed, taken back into a condenser, taken to a... a uh, what they call a cooling tower in this respect and this is an air vented water vapor and then the cooler vapor is re-condensed into fluids and comes out into the reinsertion into the this waste brine and is reinserted also so the salt water that they're putting into the the oil fracted out oil reservoirs that are empty I just had an earthquake down in uh, Oklahoma associated with that uh, reinjection, and they stopped the reinjection process. I think that was just in the last few days they've had to uh, say no more of that because of the earthquakes. Hydraulic uh, just jacks up the sub sub uh, strata, causes these large earthquakes. So it's a little bit smaller. There we go. In a geothermal dry steam power plant, steam alone is produced directly from the geothermal reservoir and is used to run the turbines that power the, the generator. Because there's no water, the steam separator used in a flash plant is not necessary. Dry steam power plants account for approximately 50% of installed geothermal capacity in the U.S. and are located in California. Mm -hmm. but those resources are not always available, so dry steam plant, basically steam coming up, runs the turbine, condensed steam back into the ground. But there is an issue here with uh, pollutants or you know, salt 
or other minerals in the water that can mess up your turbine. So binary systems is what we is a picture of a larger application in the Imperial Valley. Ormat Technologies, Ormat's a, an Israeli uh, company. So to deal with the uh, impurities, you can have a binary power plant. This one in Burdett, Nevada. Binary power plants will take the hot brine or geothermal heated fluid from the reservoir up into a vaporizer. The vaporizer then allows that a secondary fluid to the run the turbine. And that is then condensed, comes back into the preheater, back up into the vaporizer. So there's two systems. There's the heated brine or the polluted materials that are you know, salt, minerals, runs through here. The heat's taken into the secondary heating fluid, runs the turbine, creates the power, and then that is reused. Meanwhile, the brine is run through here. The heat's been taken out of it, and it's re-injected or an injection well. Here's one of those here. You notice that uh, there's not a lot of steam coming out of these. It's a closed system in the flash binary power plant in uh, Puna, Hawaii. Flash binary. So you see the little difference here is that you've got the production well here and you've got the separator. Separates the uh, steam from the hot fluid and this tends to be where the impurities gather here. And this is taken down into the secondary or the uh, preheater. What they call uh, just it's getting that fluid ready and taking the impurities out of it. Here the, the steam, purified steam pretty much, goes into the turbine, goes back into the vaporizer is cooled off turbine level one and is reinserted into turbine level two and out it comes cooler and runs back into the preheater and then can be uh, recirculated into the injection well so these systems and you can see that here's the cooling towers over here these systems can be a lot less intrusive a lot closer to the ground. Uh, this is a solar geothermal plant in Stillwater, Nevada. It's a hybrid plant, huh? How do geothermal heat pumps work? And see, this is a, as you're taking your quiz. If this uh, lecture is whoa, if you've gone to sleep. Then you can come back on your own. Well, I don't know the answer to that question. Well, here's your resource right here Geothermal Energy Association. This is a, a big part of what we're going to be looking at throughout the course.